Hello, good evening. Sorry for the delay. A little bit of our technical hiccup. Now we are assuming all good and ready to go. Hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome back. Uh, our agenda today is to look at uh, essentially a QA plan, uh, especially for the last 35, 40 days, and how to maximize our. Uh, both output and and looking at a higher score in terms of what are those topics that I should pick and are doable uh, in in maybe a short duration of time, essentially maximizing our output as much as possible in the coming few days, right? Okay, great. So uh, we have sound and we have screen. Uh, idea number one is uh, that. You have to kind of convince yourself that uh, there is enough easy stuff in the test and you are looking for the easy stuff. So you have to kind of reprogram your brain uh, and really convince it that there is this is an easy test and there's a lot of easy stuff to do. And if there is difficult stuff, I can very easily skip it because anyway, I don't have too much time, right? In 40 minutes, I'm not going to do all 22, 24, 26 questions anyway. Um, I'm looking at, and even if I look at the history of scores, I know uh, uh, 12 questions will take me to my favorite B school. 12 questions in QA and maybe some uh, uh, some more marks in uh, VARC and DIRR as well. We are talking about QA only today, right? And this I'm talking about 11 questions, 12 questions, 10 questions for that person who's struggling and who's worried. Otherwise, if somebody's uh, strong section is QA, then I would be looking at around 14, 15 questions uh, because that's where they want to maximize. This is their core strength area, right? So whenever I talk about these uh, uh, essentially survival plans, uh, all of those plans are for strugglers. None of them are for people who are very good with QA. If you are very good with QA, you are just like me. You already know how to solve problems. You've gone through all topics. You were okay with QA even before you started coaching because you were okay with QA in school. So the whole coaching was only okay, a, a quick revision, a reminder, maybe learning shortcuts and uh, more exam-oriented techniques. But you already have that framework. So all of these conversations, extra conversations are about people who are kind of worried about the test, right? Okay, so uh, that is our principal strategy that I must be now especially because in the beginning, let's say in January, you just might have done a deep dive in ratios and percentages and you're just learning the concept in great detail and you're taking your time. Right now, we kind of need to change our orientation to question selection. We have done the effort, we have put in the time to master the topic as in, I'm assuming you've done, done that because without skill, there is nothing possible. So I'm assuming that some skill is in place, right? Uh, but there is a psychology part also because I know a lot of people who are good at QA still struggle in the test, right? By learning, they're not struggling. But in the final test, especially on that D day, they're really struggling. And, and that's the problem in the programming that they believe it's a tough test. They are putting too much pressure on themselves. And uh, for whatever reason, there's a fear factor involved, right? So that's what we need to remove and say, no, I know I've seen eight section tests, uh, the real cat uh, uh, sections, not the mocks, etc. And I've seen there are always these four very easy questions. Then there are these four uh, medium level or doable questions. Then there are these two, three questions that if I have done some training, I can do. And then there are the tough questions, right? So I can divide, let's say, 100, I mean, a 100% uh, question section into... Uh, 25% is very, very easy. 25% is easy to medium. Another 25% is medium to difficult. And the last 25% might be difficult. In fact, less than that, right? In fact, this idea became very, because as a maths teacher or, or some, I mean, simply as a teacher, you end up practicing a lot of math year after year, right? So it's not real skill. It's just that you've done so much of it over the years that you know everything. Uh, I mean, there is real skill also, but like it's not real like you because you only get one year or let's say maybe two years or, or even six months right so uh, so while looking at these tests I have to realize that okay no definitely there is a, so by while I might do is as a teacher I say yeah, everything we've done in syllabus everything is the same but when I was doing the DILR section test uh, specifically the CAT sections I saw there is one definite sitter right 
uh, and then there is one which is doable with a little bit of effort and then there is one which is very very tough right so from that i assume and i concluded and i checked again that is the same for the qa section as well there are going to be four very i, I mean i'm thinking of 20 to 25 questions or so so there are going to be four very easy questions then there are going to be four um, easy medium questions which are uh, which require maybe some formula some knowledge pre knowledge etc then there are these four questions which require effort but they are still gettable you have to fight a little bit think a little uh, not formula driven but still doable and then there are these three four questions who are for the qa genius like people who love qa and they've mastered it for a couple of years uh, they're probably iit students who have already done a lot of qa beforehand so it's for that kind of a person right so you need to decide where do you fall in this category since i want to head to a decent enough b school i want to do a 99 percentile right that's where my i mean basically my holy grail is and for the last three four years the 99 percentile is available between 10 to 13 questions so pay attention you get around 86 to 88 percentile in doing six to seven questions you try six seven questions and you are at 87 88 not try as in you get them right and then for each question you can expect around a two percentile bump right so you by the time you reach to 12 questions you are way uh, past the section test uh, section uh, sectional cutoff limit as such at, at least at the very least and uh, uh, if you're good at qa then you should be going beyond that uh, you should be going to 99.99 etc right so that would be one agenda uh, so Write it down somewhere in your bedroom, in your study room, over where you can see it again and again and try and convince yourself while, why, why are doing CAT questions specifically from CAT section, for example, CAT 20 has three slots, CAT 21 has three slots, CAT 19 has two slots, I think. So uh, this modern uh, online test the last four or five years has been very identical to each other. There's not been too many changes. The pandemic changed the pattern a little bit because they had to create three tests, I mean, three slots in the day, and then they reduced the number of questions. But otherwise, if I look at uh, what is the overall structure of the test, it has remained pretty much the same. Easy questions, some easy and medium questions, some medium and difficult, and some very difficult questions. So you need to find easy questions. I can't emphasize this enough because I know a lot of people who are very good at QA did not make it, I mean, at least in their first attempt, let's say, by the second time, third time, they learned on, but definitely. But it was a major barrier because they are thinking of this test like an IID test, as a test of knowledge of corn. It is not a test of knowledge of corn. It is an elimination test. It is a pressure test. It is checking whether you can be effective under pressure, <coughs> also in a high, highly competitive environment, right? Uh, so there are, I mean, there are uh, the level of questions sometimes is so ridiculous that your uh, seven standard, eight standard, somebody who's studying in that eighth class cousin can do it. But the the way people think about it is as if it's like for applying for NASA and a lot of my scientific knowledge is going to be tested, right? So as much as possible, tell yourself that from now on it's going to be about question selection, question selection under pressure, right? Definitely. And that means once you approach your mocks or your QA section test, now your main, now when I say now, I mean exams are 40, 45, 50 days away and you've already done the foundation work, you're already in the problem solving mode, you're definitely looking at question selection, right? So that means uh, you need to know what is it that you're looking for and that depends on what is it that, what are the topics that you have mastered and what you should master maybe even now, right? So on that uh, note, my must do, and def I definitely saw a very skewed pattern in the last few years, right? In the modern CAT uh, test, arithmetic is a major driver of the test. Arithmetic means ratios, percentages, averages, mixtures and solutions, which is the same thing. Time and work, which is the same as ratios almost. And TSD, which is an application of a lot of these ideas, right? So these five major topics form arithmetic. And arithmetic has been a big chunk, almost 50% of the question. I mean, not 50, around 45 to 48% of the questions are arithmetic, right? So if you master that one single topic, you're already in the safe zone. You're, the test is not going to worry you too much, right? Uh, so knowing this, because somebody or the, I mean, you might have seen the section test in the beginning. I might have mentioned in other videos. 
even the course if you log into the course the arithmetic section is the biggest right and even in the course guide we always start with arithmetic first as such right so i'm definitely assuming that arithmetic is done because uh, i can definitely expect one to two questions from time and work right time and work is a one day topic you can master it very easily i can definitely expect one to two questions from tsd now sometimes there might be three questions on tsd and one on time and work sometimes there'll be two questions on time and work and two questions on tsd right sometimes there could be three on each also and the other section might be missing but in in every single section test that i saw uh, there was always uh, arithmetic and there was always time and work and there was always two easy questions uh, definitely in my pocket right so that means now if you're looking at if you have limited time and if you're trying to recover your learning uh, journey you say okay boss i definitely need to master arithmetic because simply the number of questions are so high there is no way to ignore it there is no way to go around it definitely i have to master it if i don't master arithmetic then i'll have to master geometry as well number system as well algebra fully as well so instead of three big topics you do one arithmetic and you're good to go for like uh, let's say the safe zone the 88 percentile 90 percentile you can hit simply on arithmetic right then quadratic equations even if i mean uh, when you talk about the whole course let's say the design course right the whole algebra course it is designed for somebody who's not touched algebra for a couple of years it starts and there's a whole journey and goes on till the end right but for anybody who was comfortable in school with qa they have done quadratic equations right and quadratic equations direct questions uh, sum of roots product of roots what is the meaning of roots right where does the function become zero just on these ideas there are a couple of questions so even if i don't i mean even if i can't do all of algebra and some people will include coordinate geometry also in algebra and a lot of complicated things and uh, some people are doing differentiation also to find maxima minima i said ignore all of that at least the basic right the super essential basics of the topic uh, like quadratic equation what is the standard form what is the sum of roots what is the product of roots and i say practice 20 extra questions from any material that i can find and i'm good to go especially if i do that right now so that the ideas are very fresh on the top of your fingertips right so arithmetic is a must do quadratic equations are must do every year i've seen two questions at least though the questions i mean if you're not good at algebra uh, there's a factor of confidence right even easy things become difficult if you're not familiar with the topic or are worried about the topic but i say now if you've done any kind of practice any kind of preparation in the last three months four months six months one year you are okay with the problem solving part now you can just go for okay let me pick up these formulas and put them in my pocket and see if i can use them in the exam without too many complications right for all of these details by the way this is a uh, all what I'm saying right now is also covered in a lot of these CAT workshops that have been uploaded, right? So in with detail, with questions in front of you, so that this uh, theoretical knowledge makes more sense also. Uh, inequalities and modulus function is again something that I have to do. Two questions uh, between inequalities and modulus. And again, if you if you say, okay, I am ready to receive, I'm not, the fear is not there, then inequalities can be mastered in a day. Modulus function can be mastered in a day. Three hours with inequalities, three hours with modulus functions and you're good to go. And inequalities is like addition subtraction is just a commonsensical tool, right? So uh, it will be thrown with the quadratic, with the modulus function in the graphs as uh, well. So you have to kind of master it, right? Basic input output algebra. So, so far what I'm saying is arithmetic is a must do almost all of it. Uh, because it's scoring and it's easy and it's playful and definitely worth investing in. But in algebra, I'm not saying all algebra or, or go through everything. Can I make sure I know quadratic equations? Can I make sure that I know the basics of what is an inequality? How do I operate with modulus function or absolute value functions? And again, at this point in time, assume, I'm assuming you kind of know all of these terms, right? Algebra and graphs is another important thing. The, the number of questions maybe there will be only one but it's such an important tool for the rest of algebra that okay quadratic equations make more sense if you have understood the graphs inequalities become easier on the graph uh, journey same for modulus function we have a shortcut based on graphs so again and there are direct questions as well right uh, now for topic like geometry uh, again all of my the courses actual courses are quite 
bulky and chunky, right? So a lot of geometry foundations and a lot of geometry practice. If you can't go through all of that, you can't revise everything, what you need to do is keep the list of formulas with you, right? Keep creating a list of formulas and make sure that they are in your memory. Because a lot of times, I mean, I put in a lot of effort in the geometry course, teaching basics and making sure that you're comfortable with uh, any kind of geometry situation and developing real long-term skills. But as far as the test was concerned, I saw very easy application-based questions, at least one or two, right? So if there were four geometry questions, two of them were just, oh, do I know the formula of the rhombus? And do I know the form, uh, the question for you as well, that do I know the formula of the rhombus, right? Is it, is it uh, at the top of my mind? So for geometry, I will not do revise everything and, and solve everything again or go through everything. But I'll definitely cre create a list of geometry formulas and then maybe solve 20, 30, 50 extra problems as well. Why not? And again, remember all of these advisories are people who are short on time, uh, uh, they've not done too much work. Ideally, I would say, guys, you should have started <coughs> at least in Jan, Feb, if you're worried about QA. And even if you gave one month to each topic, arithmetic one month, algebra one month, there was plenty of time to do everything, right? So all of this advisory, you have to take a little bit of, like with a uh, salt, pinch of salt as well, right? Logs and uh, formula list. Now, as a topic, I've kind of always ignored logs because it's so basic and there's not too much there. But every year, there are in every slot, there were two log questions. One of them was definitely easy. The one was oh, an, a person who's okay at QA will be able to solve, right? And again, log is a one-day topic. So if I say, okay, I have 30 days, what is a must-do? This is a definitely a must-do. Actually, theoretically, everything is a must-do. You should have done PNC also and number system also and Revenders and HCA, well, same, everything. But I say, okay, based on, and this is a gambler's outlook. This includes a little bit of risk. You can't come back to me and say, sir, I did only these topics and suddenly there were five questions on geometry, right? Uh, this is based on recent last four, five years pattern. And generally the meta uh, uh, form that I saw in the test that, okay, as a teacher also, I realized like I was going through a lot of cat questions and I realized that I put in so much effort in teaching like quadratic equations, but a lot of times the questions are so straightforward or same for geometry, especially for geometry. I was like, okay, I've done so much geometry, but even if I, if you were comfortable with QA, you're okay with, you know, you're just okay with problem solving. And what do I mean by that? Because I've met a lot of people who are like scared of CAD, right? They, they, they shake when they think of, uh, not CAD, but QA. But if you're okay with, you've done all of arithmetic, you've done all of algebra, you've done all of number system, let's say, and not done geometry at all, but still you keep the list of formulas, you'll be able to solve a couple of questions because you know how to solve problems by now, right? So ideally you should have done everything, but if you're looking at a recovery plan, okay, boss, I'm starting today in QA, what should I do? You should do these topics and there is enough time, by the way, to do these topics at around two to three hours per day. If you are full, free, full day, if you are unemployed and you have the whole day to yourself, then even faster, right? I'm assuming two, three hours per day, uh, this much can be done in 30 odd days as such, right? A quick revision guide, uh, for pe this is for people who maybe did arithmetic in, in January, February and uh, mastered it as well, but they haven't recently touched upon it. I would say going through everything, ratios will take a couple of days. Percentages will take three days. Ratios and percentage is a must do because ratios and percentages like the alphabet of arithmetic, right? It's the ABC of arithmetic. Percentages, data will come in TSD also, averages also, DILR section as well. So it's such a, it's like part of the language, right? So you must do ratios and percentages and I've given them two days, three days. You can add a couple of extra days as well. Time and work, I don't think as far as learning is concerned, right? You want to learn the topic, it can be done in one day. You want to practice a lot more, 25 extra time and work questions, another day. And the questions that I have not, I've seen in the test and nothing, I've not seen a question which has not been done in the video, right? Or similar question has not been done in the video. Of course, there are a couple of twists and turns, but that's what we learn in the videos anyway, that, oh, how, what the story changes, what to do now, right? Averages and mixtures, again, very important topic. Two questions each slot for the last three years. Um, 
and very interesting topic can be mastered in two days one day for averages one day for weighted averages and mixture solutions when i say can be mastered that means you're just sitting with averages for these two days right for whatever your study hours are you're only doing averages and you're kind of not stopping till you like finish it you start the topic and you keep going keep going you get tired you take a break you watch some tv and then you start again and you keep finishing it in two days you can do so tsd is longer and even here i would if i was strategizing and i had uh, i'm limited resources i would think again because time and work takes one day to fully master and there are two questions in return right tsd some for some people it might take 5 7 days as well if i look at the whole module uh, and i say go follow only one hour a day then it takes 8 9 days to finish right but time and work can be done in a day and there are two questions and tsd takes 5 7 days and it has two questions as well so that's where maybe that uh, selection will come okay what should i definitely pocket i should definitely pocket time and work first right and then in tsd tsd is a big topic is long journey see guys remember the modules are designed as a teacher i'm responsible for you to go from zero to hero right so i've designed them in great detail with great care comfortable long discussions right but now what you need to do is you need to bring all your i'm, I'm assuming you have mastered the concepts now you need to bring the formulas at your fingertip right i saw so many questions on trains crossing a man the moment i say trains crossing a man is the formula available at my fingertip time is equal to first of all time is distance upon speed only but time is equal to length of the train divided by speed of the train if the man is moving length of the train divided by speed of the train plus minus speed of the man uh, if if it's a platform length of the train plus length of the platform divided by speed of the train if there are two trains right so notice that how i mean randomly i mentioned trains and platforms and all the formulas are just pouring out of my mouth right so you need to kind of get to that level uh, that i definitely know what the basic form is right what is the basic concept there because then the problem will challenge you anyway so you can't have oh let me first think oh what was the formula uh, you don't have time for that right like especially if i'm looking at mastering uh, like breaking through to the i am of my dream right so that would be my revision guide for arithmetic and it would be 2 plus 3 5 plus 1 6 plus 2 8 3, plus 5 13 days you want to make it 20 days make it 20 days but master it you want to make it 30 days make it 30 days but master it right uh, and remember whenever we are doing all of this for example i say quadratic equations uh, you've done it in school you've done 6 uh, 4 5 years of maths in school uh, even if you quit it at 10th if you went till 12th and if you're an engineer you've done a lot of uh, problem solving right so nobody is almost almost nobody starting from zero i assume as a again as a service provider as somebody who, like who supposed to deliver a product i assume that you don't know anything and i start almost from zero and i want to build comfort and like teach everything in detail but uh, not everybody needs it right because you have done like some schooling years also so it's never that you're starting you did not know this you know this it's a matter of now making it fresh uh, keeping the formulas handy uh, and making sure that everything is at the top of your mind uh algebra similarly i think quadratic equations uh linear equations can be done in one to two days and again they can be done in one to two days right like if you give it two days you will master it but uh, what i know also is the psychology and the time pressure and the circus going on on youtube right oh countdown 50 days 49 days so most of the time people are just just uh, looking at the countdown and saying oh oh one more day gone oh one more day gone they're not really doing anything right so if you ignore the countdown and say yeah forget about cat being in 40 days let me just focus on the topic on the next couple of days not the future outcome not a long term goal a very short term goal so you will find that quadratic equation there is nothing to it and again in the course there might be some extra work but all that extra work for the uh, the poor like the weaker uh, child is uh, if you're a, if you're good at qa you can go through it very fast you just have to watch it once or not even that you start the video and you realize okay i already know this i can skip to the next one right but if i look at quadratic equations 
what are what is there what is the meaning of roots how does the graph look what is the product of roots what is the sum of roots what is the general formula of the roots right these five points cover everything you do five questions on each 25 questions one two hours of work and uh, quadratic equations is fresh in front of you uh, graph similarly you spend i've written two days but if you take one day also and just understand how input output works you're good to go you can make a graph for anything anything uh, the, uh, the other person throws at you, you can create a graph situation inequalities is a one day topic modulus and function is a one day topic apgp uh, can again can i because again if i go into the apgp module some very complicated things have been taught also right but the questions that I see are like sometimes very, very straightforward. All you needed was like the basic AP formula. And again, arithmetic progression, basic formula you need for other problem solving as well, right? So I would invest uh, a couple of days there. So uh, this, was, this would be my... Uh, algebra guide. And my overall plan would be to focus on these topics, right? And essentially, uh, I would, uh, if I'm, again, it depends, for example, again, situations differ, right? So let's say your BARC is sorted, your DILR, you know, you have worked on it already. You just want to work on quant because anyway, in DILR, I don't have to memorize any formulas. In VARC, I don't have to memorize any formulas. And if I have achieved a breakthrough already, I'm sorted. Uh, every once a week, I can take a test and practice a little more. But I also know that daily practice is not going to like boost my score any further because the ideas are, I've, I've reached a level wherever I wanted to reach, right? And I have a lot of time and I can give it all to quant, but I haven't mastered the quant section yet. Then I would do this, I would give it extra time. And then once I have more time, then I'll explore more topics, right? Uh, and if you have done quant already and you have finished everything, great. I would still revise these few things. I would practice arithmetic a lot more, make sure that it's in my pocket. I would make sure that uh, at least uh, I have mastered these things. Once I have done these, then maybe, for example, right now, I'm not even talking about PNC. And I have taught PNC in great detail. It's like a 13, 14 day uh, course there, right? But I saw one question on PNC in each of the slots. And, uh, and in, in, in one case, at least, it was a difficult question, right? So, again, is it worth investing in? Or you have to think that, no, maybe that one PNC question is there to make that QA guy happy who loves QA, right? So, so because the, the guy who has worked hard at QA, who went to the IITs, he should also get some bonus points, right? You should get some questions that others can't do. So, think of it like uh, these difficult questions are for people who are... Uh, a is QA champions and they deserve to do it. I don't need to do it, right? My job is to just clear uh, the sectional or at least push my score as much as possible. So let me go for what makes sense, right? Uh, so my, what I'm trying to say is you have to ignore a lot of stuff. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to remember every esoteric formula. You kind of have to remember the triangle, the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Or are you like that separated? You say, okay, no, geometry I have not done. That means I will not even look at this formula where the sum of angles is 180 degrees, which maybe there is a direct application question. Oh, the area of a rhombus is half diagonal 1 into diagonal 2 and two easy sitter questions just based on this. Can I apply this half D1 and D2 formula, right? Do I know the Pythagoras theorem at least? So um, maybe I don't know the centroid, the in-center properties as such. Even they are just formulas at the end, right? In geometry, you have a formula. If you know the formula, you can apply it. But I say, okay, I ignore that part, but can I have the basic properties in place? Do I know so that isosceles triangles, when the two sides are equal, the opposite angles are equal? In an equilateral triangle, all the angles are equal. And what is the area of an equilateral triangle? Uh, topics like mensuration, for example. If you just keep the... Formula list, okay, what is the volume of a sphere and what is the surface area? What is the volume of a cone and what is the surface area? Uh, what is the volume of a hemisphere and what is the surface area? Just that much is enough and solving maybe 10 more problems in preparation, right? So essentially what I'm trying to say is pick and choose now. If you haven't, if you have done everything, you have mastered everything like my ideal student. Uh, for example, in my case, my uh, everything was locked and loaded and ready even before you signed up for the program, right? So I have done it in advance already like a good child. So if you've done it like a, you started on time, you followed all the advisories, you followed all the earlier plans, 
you must be already good to go this is for somebody who's like okay something happened some, some i there was suddenly extra work i have just come back from the us i couldn't study for two months what should i do you should be doing something like this right okay so let me look at a couple of questions what you guys are saying i am just able to do max 10 12 questions with 60 to 80% accuracy so say 12 questions in 80% accuracy you are hitting around 8 9 8 marks right like some negative marking as well uh and uh, so how to reduce time to solve more doable ones pick and choose first of all make sure that you're doing the easy questions first and now what does easy mean it's very subjective if you have if you for example i i saw a problem it said the area of a equilateral triangle and the area of a hexagon or something uh, do i have the area of a hexagon at my fingertip then it was a very easy question otherwise it was not that means it depends on the the easy difficult in qa depends on whether first of all it's in your comfort topic right so when i go for when i look at these section tests uh i definitely look for time and work because it's also very easy to spot two people can do this work if something is mentioned and i know that that topic is definitely always i mean let's say personal favorite also right so i'll always start with time and work and i'm not starting with question number 1 or question number 2 right i'm looking for first of all i want to give if i have 40 minutes i should be okay with giving 5 minutes just to a general preview i'm not solving anything i am just looking and thinking looking and thinking a little your brain can also do a lot of work in the background processing right so i looked at question number 2 it's about the modulus but i'm not going to solve it now because first i want to solve that time and work question and again by the way that modulus question might also will be very easy depending on whether you have mastered modulus or not but let's say you have not done modulus but you've done time and work so you say okay uh, i'll come back to this let me first do what i definitely know right so that means you have to kind of know yourself that okay what is it that you have mastered well and truly and what is it that you have not done uh if i don't know the basic rules of log then i look at the log question and i know i don't have to look at it because i don't know any rules i don't know how logs operate uh but if i saw all the log rules only yesterday and i practice 15 questions i'm definitely going to be tempted to try it right and again trying it does not mean that is definitely going to be easy so you try it you couldn't you cannot see the next step you stop and you move on to the next question because you can't pause and start thinking about it let your brain do the thinking in the background you try it you try it from another direction you try from another direction a minute has gone by you move on right so time management is definitely going to be a major part of the process uh so you do your easy easy ones first that means you have to kind of go through the whole test preview and then start choosing right then there could be many ways of approaching this okay in i can also do this process by every five questions okay let me look at first five questions and then see which are the two super easy doable ones and what is the general topic anyway oh averages is there oh one geometry is there oh one log question is there okay next five okay tsd question is there i'm good at tsd but it looks very big like it's four sentences five sentences okay uh, what about the other question which is very short let me try that first right so you're constantly looking to reduce your uh, time invested in any question you're obviously doing it in an urgency and you're alert and awake and you're trying to solve it uh, speed is also guys a matter of effort and preparation right how much effort have you uh, uh, put in the process uh, have you mastered the topic well if you've done tsd i mean i tell my children that all topics should be ideally done twice at least right doing it twice means that once you in must like once first time maybe you're doing it you're learning a new topic right and you learn it well you understood and you had a lot of aha moments but now you need to consolidate it and make sure that it's like a, a punching force ready to fire trigger happy right so i recommend for weak people i recommend doing it thrice if you're good at maths then doing it once is enough because you already did a lot of maths in school anyway and you're like okay i i this is a repetition anyway so speed can also be improved by conceptual clarity again so for example i've seen questions in averages where or in percentages or in basic profit loss and discount people make long long equations whereas if i had 
more conceptual clarity that question could have been done in like 30 seconds flat right because oh i know that it can be done this other way also and i don't have to create these long equations right or can i be more practical and do little trial and error or can i use the options to maybe reduce my time right so these are some ways to reduce the time skill matters guys if you have worked hard on a topic that will show up that will uh, result in lower uh, lower perform i mean lower time better performance as such so um, okay let me see what other questions you guys are asking yeah. somebody says i'm scoring between 15 and 20 15 and 20 questions or 15 and 20 marks i don't know what what you were asking 15 and 20 questions or 15 and 20 marks okay somebody also said i'm worried worry worrying is not going to do anything yeah, right so uh, you have to number one skill by the way life skill uh, today there was a little bit of a in, like a technical disruption in the beginning otherwise i want to talk about the number one skill is being calm guys right uh, relax and relax over and over again and focus on the task at hand okay uh, i need to reach the cut off cut off is 10 questions let's say right you are saying 10 15 then you're already clear if you see me 10 15 questions you're already clearing the cut off very very easily uh, but otherwise it also becomes a hunt for 10 questions right can i find 10 easy questions can i find half the 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 test is going to be is what i'm looking for right i don't want to look at all the questions i don't need to do all the questions i'm looking at 10 questions okay how do i create these 10 questions like how do i gather 10 marks for myself two marks from time and work two marks from tsd two from averages and weighted averages one from ratio and percentage you're already at seven questions right can these topics be mastered in two days each yes they can be mastered in two days each are you willing to sit down through the day and burn through the topic right also are you actually going through the uh, as in are you actually preparing and training or are you worrying because there's a whole industry designed to make you worry right uh, the algorithm youtube algorithm is, is idiotic so youtube wants everybody to come on youtube every day and say something so a lot of people they just come on youtube every day and they they, they talk right Ki, oh and they have to because like their whole life depends on this whatever they have created so they're like okay today we'll talk about this today we'll talk about that today what is the strategy that we can try it's not it's very simple guys you work on your skill and clarity of concept you work some on something you learn that well and then you apply it right uh, for example number one idiotic question that i've heard and you can use this as a public service announcement tell other people and use it as a benchmark to judge people in life also number one idiotic question that i've heard is uh, which i am will design the paper this year and the dude who talks about this will i mean even if he talks about it five minutes every three days he's wasted 15 minutes of your life right for well total hogwash bullshitical nonsense there is no truth no analysis that can be done to what i am has created what kind of a paper oh and when i am bangalore makes a paper it likes it is like this and when i'm calcutta makes a paper and like it's like this that person is wasting your time and that's his main job he wants your attention so every day he will say oh today let's talk about the imb selection criteria boss you don't know quadratic equations you want to think about imb selection criteria what is your priority right you first have to clear the basic cutoff you have to get some score there but there's a whole industry out there whose primary task is to basically waste time right so stop wasting time dive into the topics and master the topics worrying is not going to do anything worrying is good you feel a worry say oh and then you take action you worry and then i see like like personally also from my own life and i've gone through like lots of phases worrying can also run, make you like fearful and and uh, uh, make you run away from what you want to do right like oh i'm stressed so let me to remove the stress i'll call a friend and watch a tv show and more time is gone and i'm more stressed now because 
when i felt that stress i should have immediately opened my notebook or done 15 minutes of learning work then maybe another break would have happened but if i am stressed and i start reacting like okay let me take a little break and then obviously life is going to be difficult also guys it's time to grow up no it's time to like uh, you say i am i'm going i'm planning for cat and i am and my dream is this so then work accordingly also why whoever told you it's easy ask kohli he will tell you it's not easy ask his wife anushka sharma whatever he she will tell you it's not easy if whatever you want to do in life requires a reasonable amount of effort yes there are smart ways of doing it yes some great courses will reduce your time and effort by, by a certain extent but effort needs to be put in right so so that is number one idiotic question which i am is going to do and is going to design the paper your performance has nothing to do with which i am is going to design the paper it has to do with you and maybe the experiences you've had in life i know a lot of schools are not high quality schools you may maybe you grew up somewhere in far away rural india you did not have access to great education uh so there there could be factors in the past which are hampering your performance but now you have internet you have access to the best teachers in the world you can work on those skills right uh but uh so you have to kind of take control of your attention and and develop it in a laser sharp way and put it on one thing okay this is what i am going to do uh i know okay for example if somebody is following this plan i say okay i he told me to do arithmetic let me do arithmetic for 10 days 15 days let me master it the guy was saying it can be mastered so let me try it fully maybe it will not happen in 12 days maybe it will take 20 days it's still better than uh, sitting and thinking about like totally nonsensical things or worrying right worrying never achieves anything worrying is good worrying is needed because if you never worry you will not even study you'll say ah i'm not stressed uh, but mm, whatever right you i'm sure you know people like that who are great by the way non worriers are better than worriers but some worry is great okay yeah time is near let me up my intensity so use worry to trigger uh, better performances right and again don't go crazy uh, guys your brain function depends on what you eat how much you exercise how generally healthy are you right your brain works on blood your brain is a computer and the electricity is blood flow and the blood flow carries your nutrients and everything so make sure that you are uh, dip, like if you have a sports hour you do that sports hour you don't need to kill your life and sit in front of the computer all day and learn all day or like sit with a book all day and just keep doing it in fact that does not work anyway balance it out play for a couple of hours uh, work on your body exercise in the morning if you exercise and you do a little bit of cardio your performances will improve that's a scientific fact but i've never seen any youtube video from like my industry ever talking about guys you should exercise because because exercise changes your brain performance that is like basic fact of science right if you're not exercising if you're like a poor weakly sickly person you're obviously going to be tired faster than like you will run out of energy faster right so you need to work on that these are some things that i've also learned very late like till college and everything i was like uh, like playing a lot and doing all kind of physical activities but once i started working i remember there was no exercise in between there was just you teaching from morning to night morning to night which i have recently learned is a bad thing you need that uh, balance in your life as well so don't go crazy there is still plenty of time if you ignore the world and say okay 45 days is a lot of time try try 45 days of exercising forget about cat yeah cat lab in next year also try 45 days of exercising try first day try five push ups next day try seven push ups by the fifth day you'll already be doing more push ups or whatever kind of exercise you're doing and in 45 days people will be complimenting you keep bro you got muscle so you kind of need to understand that 40 days 45 days 30 days is a lot of time to master something and again yes i know we have to do master three topics like there is qa and there is vrc and there is dilr but i am also assuming that you're not completely nonsensical you're not really starting now you did start earlier and you're kind of either lost the way somewhere or there's some disruption and you're or you're just looking at okay how to maximize what i want to do in the next few days right so put in effort put in real effort and this is definitely and now i'm giving you a a curtail list of what you need to do you don't need to do everything so, so somebody you said 15 20 is the score uh 
that means around you're doing around six questions no it's four marks right so you're doing around four to five you're doing around six seven questions and you're doing one two wrong uh, guys the ideas remain the same if you're doing uh, why are you like what topics are you doing and what topics are you not doing and as you invest in your QA database like oh have I mastered algebra if I haven't then obviously my whole section is going to be limited but if I have then okay I have arithmetic and I have algebra Sunday I'm going from five questions doable to 12 questions doable right uh, so yeah topic mastery will be needed to boost your score there is no way around it uh, you, you you haven't put in the effort in the topic you haven't mastered the topic or somebody has taught you poorly that will always remain a problem but if you're looking at okay how do I find those 12 questions this is the way uh, logs there's two questions time and work guys uh, or, or be targeted also okay so so you have one week you say okay this week I want to boost my time and work and averages right and I want to make sure that these two topics are mastered now what happens is you might master time and work let's say from uh, today's Tuesday till Friday you master time and work and averages and you appear for a mock on Saturday and it has time and work and averages question which you can't do it doesn't matter forget about what happens that day but you must target it like that right so, so you say okay this week I want to push that algebra because I've already done arithmetic let me push one week of algebra and then see what happens to my score and then again sit down and find out what are the topics that I'm missing out how can I increase my range right it's always guys if you sit down and ask yourself it's always commonsensical you need to uh, what I'm saying is you can improve right whether whether you can do it in 30 days 45 days that might be like a little bit of a question mark but if you say give me one year and I can make sure that all these topics you can master well right not even one year give me 90 100 days and I can say yeah this is definitely enough time to master all topics right so you sit down with yourself and you ask what topics are you doing what topics are you definitely mastered you say okay I definitely every time I've done averages and weighted averages and TSD I can do very easily uh, but uh, this algebra is troubling me okay so one week algebra only algebra questions only quadratic modulus inequality and sitting and learning with it my skill level today does not matter guys nobody was born with all I mean some people are born with perfect skills and great memory and great math skills but effort Monday I'm here Tuesday I'm here Wednesday I'm here Thursday I'm pushing a little extra Friday I'm pushing even more even if my Saturday mock scores fail they plummet totally Sunday I'll still be back here 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 that's because that's all we can do we're not going to give up right if you can give up it's great not many people can give up also no say yeah I mean this is not for me I'm going to play cricket right Virat Kohli has not done his MBA he's failed his 10th standard and he's a very rich famous person right so there are life there are plenty of options if you don't like it it's completely not your cup of tea great it is a certain kind of mind that is required and human minds differ right so you might you might realize you know oh I love drawing and painting and I've become a very famous painter and 20 years after your death your paintings will be sold for millions of dollars so who knows uh, what I'm trying to say is you choose your battles no nobody forced you and said you have to do this but now you have decided you're going to do this so you put in the effort till the exam day then you give up again and say boss I, uh, I put in enough effort here but till the uh, the game is going on you must keep at it and you must uh, simple guys look for hourly daily improvement don't think about CAD don't think about MBA uh, don't think about long future goals think okay I want to master algebra this week or geometry replace according to your needs I want to master algebra what can I learn on Monday what can I learn on Tuesday have I learned new things right am I improving from day to day that's all you need to uh, focus on you don't need to focus on uh, long goals all the time you said long goals one day for 40 days and then say okay now back to algebra right or back to geometry I've done arithmetic and algebra already somebody is asking me I've done arithmetic already algebra I was already good at what should I do great master geometry and PNC why not PNC even if there is no direct question right it's just a tool so you're just going through a topic and challenging your brain and learning to think in different directions and you're getting better at problem solving 
is not going to harm you in life someday your children will need to learn pnc and you will do a way better job of it because you have you've done it and you will feel confidence level boost also right because your brain is improving every single time you learn something your brain physically changes right so you're kind of really building muscle there uh i don't like pnc i have time i have done my, my scores are okay but i don't like pnc try pnc because you kind of need to get this barrier out of the way you need to understand that anything can be done and anything can be done uh, can be learned well also right so i would do pnc or whatever like lot of times i mean when i started i was a verbal teacher i learned those topics as a matter of challenge only that is these kids are learning why should i entire learn why should i just be oh this person right so i remember yeah sitting down and going through uh, i mean i already i was okay with maths in school and everything and i'm an engineer but like learning that great detail to be able to teach anyone and everyone from any level right so uh, you pick a target you you have your weekly targets you set a topic uh, and go through it if you have already done that then you just go for your section test to section test every couple of days maybe two to three section tests in a week because once again you you should, you should if it's designed like cat and it's a great quality you will you should find this pattern four easy questions four medium four slightly difficult four very difficult and am i finding the easy ones or not right easy ones means familiar easy ones means doable easy ones means not too many steps it won't take 5 uh, minutes to solve right you look at it you try it and oh boom you get the answer so uh, your challenge will remain the same which i started off with are you picking easy questions right this is a uh, sum total of your test strategy because uh, at one point of time cat had like uh, open uh, sections right you can go, you can do con you can do vrc you can do dilr then go to vrc then go con in that scenario there was still some strategic thought required how do i maximize my score minimize my time use my strengths ignore my weaknesses etc these days not too much strategy again beware of the strategy guy beware of the motivation guy you there to waste your time essentially and grab your attention right strategy is simple because now you are logged into your qa you can't quit qa and go to vrc right so you have dedicated 40 minutes for uh, your qa section and that's it you just have to deal with qa only so now in qa what do i have to do i have to look for easy questions first that is one the psychological programming would be that yeah the test is easy or am i focusing on the difficult stuff because i'm sure you've heard by now whatever you focus on is real for you so if you think of that test like a difficult test it will be a very difficult test but if you have convinced yourself that it's a easy test it will be a very easy test let me tell you it's an easy test i mean uh, you will not find these kind of questions in iits right in iits uh, because i'm trying to create an engineer who will create a road which has to be reliable i have to really check whether he knows his shit or not right here all i am looking for is can you like manage because you're looking at managers right and a manager is a generalist he does a lot of things he just doesn't under pressure and and he should be have some basic con skills in place right not even i mean it's not even needed so easy first and try and convince yourself that bro uh, the majority of the test is easy and you know those affirmations right daily life affirmations cat is easy i love cat cat loves me cat is easy i love cat cat loves me right uh, if you so essentially you're trying to be as calm as collected as uh, relaxed as possible relaxed people do way better than tense people again that is a fact of life so you've done the con that then it would be about how do i calm the fuck down right uh, really work on distracting yourself and run away from the subject right you've done i mean i'm assuming you've mastered it already uh, you've mastered algebra you've mastered arithmetic you've done everything you finished the modules okay great i want to do one section test every 3 days that's it and rest of the time i want to read uh, watch documentaries go for my exercise do whatever else is there because the skill is already there and i don't want to go crazy thinking about it right so i'm practicing but not going overboard okay i've done quant i need to work on a little bit on dilr okay one week only i, I will only do dilr puzzles let the quant uh, go into the deep brain and and just before exam i'll revise key ideas again so start relaxing uh, if you've done the work and start main game is to look for easy questions right 
so i'm assuming this is enough for now uh, let me know what your questions are uh, i will try this again we'll also do the same for varc and dilr but again notice that varc and dilr is drastically different because in varc there is no formula list right there is no chapters or terms that you must know everything that you need to know is right there on the uh, the the in the text itself right so lr and rc are skill based even qa skill but the skill itself requires a list of ideas varc does not yes you need to have a lot of like i mean a good vocabulary in place but uh, so the approach is very different in those two sections compared to here for example if in geometry if you don't know the formula list you can't do anything no matter how good you are at problem solving if you don't remember that formula right and you can't derive it there you will not in like less than one minute right so different approaches and that's why quant is also the the most time consuming another thing to notice is quant uh, has the same marks as varc overall right so if you are okay with the sectional cut offs i wouldn't i would rather put that extra time i mean if i manage the most of it i would put that extra time in uh, lr mastery or varc breakthrough right okay have i really mastered the reading process as such uh, but if quant is your strong section and you want to break through it then these would be the plans this would be the topic list must do topic list and approximately how long does it take to finish everything right so this is it for now uh, i'll see you guys really soon uh, uh, and uh, i'll keep meeting you guys anyway i will also try the the youtube algorithm circus and i'll keep so <coughs> and i'm also sharing it on the telegram uh, a lot of cat workshops qa workshops whatever i'm saying here right now actually way more with uh, cat questions and discussing each question uh, those kind of workshops have also been loaded so if you finish everything in the modules please start going through the cat workshops uh, uh, modules right yeah, the the videos and uh, there will be more added but again uh, that is because my job is to teach so i'll continue to add in the course anyway but even if you don't do everything it's okay but if you have done the core modules so that is more than enough right master basics is more important and try to get out of the formula based thinking right because i'm again if i'm uh, if you had any kind of training i'm assuming you've already been through uh, these kind of ideas so that's it for today i will see you guys really soon bye